All right, hello and welcome. My name is Jason Welsh, and uh, welcome to another edition of the Blender Game Engine using uh, a ZBrush model as your catalyst. So, uh, in our previous, you know, 13 videos that, you know, they're real short, by the way, but in 13 videos, you know, I basically walked you through how to get a person into the engine uh, and assign some very, very basic game logic to it, and that was it and some weighing tricks. So now we're going to get into very complex things and uh, show you you know, how to get past that point even. And as I learn, you learn. That's how it goes. Okay. So here is what I have got so far. Okay, as you know, I'm putting in actions. So I got several actions now. I have an attack. I have an idle. You know, with a person, uh, the werewolf just kind of banters back and forth, kind of like just looking. Then I got, you know, a look left, a look right. I'm going to kind of show you, you know, you know how to set up a new action in here uh, and base it off another action. Okay. So always have a looped animation. I showed you that with uh, the number 12 or 11 um, of the series where, you know, I had the wave and you notice it went from and a regular stance then lift it up the arm and then put it back down but you should always loop your animations there's very rare occasions that you don't loop your animations you know like uh, jump but then you gotta do something else for that one okay so here what we have to do is I want another attack okay so I got an attack here And what it does is basically does that. Okay, now, special note to this, it's based off the idle. Okay, so the idle has a stance that looks like this to begin with, and then it attacks. What I want is an attack two, and the attack two is going to be branched off of walk which has a whole different kind of stance this is a non-defensive stance on the character and he's just walking forward so as soon as he walks forward I want him to be able to attack or lunge forward uh, so always base it on you know a couple different stances you know and, uh, if you're just getting into this you know now I got an idle stance that goes to an attack and I got an a walk that goes into an attack so here's how I make a new um, actual action in here. So, very simple. I hit it, add new. It, notice it kept the stance. Okay. Now in here, what I want to do is say attack two. Okay. My next object is to get rid of the keys from the previous one. I don't know why it does this, why it doesn't clear the key information or whatever, but that's basically how it goes. You have to hit here and click A on the keyboard two times to make sure all the diamonds are yellow. Okay, and then what you do is hit X on the keyboard to erase selected. Okay, I also want to key this stance in. So what I'll do is go into pose mode highlight a bone with the left mouse button and hit A to highlight the entire set. Now this this attack is probably going to have them lunge forward a little bit. So I am going to actually um, key in my timeline using I on the keyboard. I'm going to key location and rotation because he might be jumping up a little bit and then landing back down. Okay, so now I want to go back to the original stance that he was standing in, so I also want to key it here too. So, same thing. I eye on the keyboard, location and rot. So there we go. So now what happens between 80 frames is very easy. Now, another thing that I didn't show you is, you know, if you get your animation all laid out, let's say, you know, you get something laid out that looks nice, 
and you don't like it because it's too slow, right? You can highlight all these frames and hit S on the keyboard and that will scale in, okay? And a very quick way to be able to know where one is, is put your green uh, tracker on one on your timeline. And down here I have this nice green thing that I can go like this. Here, let's scale it. See how I can scale it by... Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Okay, you can scale it that way. And I think you can scale it in the middle too but it helps to uh, have that right there at that edge because it will lock it into position and you can scale it uniformly based on the left hand side. Um, that way it'll all lock into position nice. So that is adding a new action in. Now I have a problem and I'm going to address it in the next video that I have uh, in here an action that I'm not using anymore and that is the wave animation so how do I get rid of that and that's in the next video